Hello fellow humans, I'm channeling my inner Melbourne girl today with my puffer jacket. The only thing missing is the fact that it's not from North Face and any other popular puffer jacket brands these days. Sorry, I'm not exactly well acquainted with puffer jacket brands because I don't usually wear puffer jackets, but I do know North Face because, you know, Dan Drew's famous North Face jacket. Anyways, Today I'm going to be making a gown, which I intend to wear on a very specific occasion, but I'm not going to tell you that because I feel like if I say that then it'll jinx it and I don't exactly want to jinx this. Also sorry, now that I'm realizing that wearing this is actually really noisy, so I'm just going to like try to stop moving, but we're going to be making a gown based on one, Idol's Lion music video and two, The Chronicles of Narnia. Specifically, I think it would be like Susan inspired, but I don't think it's really either or. It's just that the Lion music video by Idol gives me really like Narnia vibes and also just something about it makes me feel like this would be kind of like a Narnian thing. I will get into this later into the video, just like hang around to see me go off on some random tangent about how I feel about this project, but we're going to get started. Now, I won't jump straight into my story time as I usually do. I just have to give you a bit of a preface on how I started this project and then I will get into the story time and then we'll go back into the project again. So hang around till the end of the video to see the results. All right, so we have a problem. Um, I have laid out my fabric kind of just like roughly to see if I would be able to fit everything in and it's a good thing that I did that because from that pin up there all the way around, these pins are where my skirt will be. And then I've added in my back centerpiece here and I can get two because this is overlapped. And then I've put my front one here, although I'm not entirely sure if I can put it there because as I expected, the sleeves are a problem. So far what I can do, is I can put the sleeve like this here and it doesn't interfere with the circle of the skirt so this should be fine over here. The only problem is that this is the only space left for a second sleeve. There is nowhere else on this fabric where I would be able to put a second sleeve in. So I'm hoping that once I like properly lay this out without any like folds, creases and bumps in it, then I can take this, hold on, just like mark that there mentally, flip this over and get this in. And hopefully, even if there's like a little bit, you know, a couple chunks of the sleeve missing, I can fill it in with some scrap fabric that I have already. It's the same material and possibly the things that we're going to get out of the circle up there. And I also will use that scrap fabric probably for the cuff pieces instead of cutting out new pieces from here because I just don't think that's going to work out. Okay, and now to finally get into the story time. Now this one is kind of wild and it's kind of crazy how it's like so wild because um, this is literally just me versus dodgeball. And it's honestly shocking that I got injured in dodgeball because of all the sports that I'm actually terrible at, dodgeball is probably one of the best because I am good at avoiding things. Well, avoiding things that are being hurled at me anyways, not in general that I avoid things. But I do like to avoid things that are like coming towards me at top speed and I actually have a really good flight response so it does help. So this story is basically about that time I almost lost an eye to dodgeball and this is one of my most recent story times, it only happened back in April? Yes? April? So this was the last week of term and during the last week of term we had this kind of day off for the year 12s because I'm in year 12 now and everything is super stressful. So the teachers decided that it would be nice for us to just have kind of like a day off well, we did have like the first two lessons at school because obviously if we miss too many lessons, we're going to be super behind in our work and that wouldn't be great. For this day, we were actually kind of like just like split into groups and each group had to just come up with an activity they could do. It wasn't 
necessarily restricted to the year 12s, but the year 12s were like, yeah, we support other year 12s, and it's not like the other year levels really need our help anyways. They kind of hate us. Actually, all the year levels at our school hate the other year levels that aren't them, which is kind of understandable. But anyways, so we decided that we will mostly just keep to ourselves, and two of the groups actually, not just one, two of them decided to play dodgeball. And no, actually it might have been one. Now that I think about it, I can't actually quite remember, but that isn't exactly even pertinent to the story. What we are actually getting at is that dodgeball was played on that day as an activity set by one of the groups. Now in general, this was actually a really fun activity because our group really loves dodgeball and we're actually really good and competitive at it. So it was just a class v class thing and you know, we were having fun, we were chilling and I was doing what I usually do and that is stand at the back and protect our cones. And I am actually generally very good at that because I suck at throwing balls because if I ever threw a ball, someone would just catch it and I'd be out instantly. I also suck at catching balls, so I'm really no use on that front, but I am very good at defending the cone. Now, I don't know how that's actually possible because I don't actually ever let the ball hit me or the cone. I do occasionally catch a ball here and there, but it's very rare and it usually just doesn't happen and that's mostly because people don't aim for the cones that are already being protected. Which honestly, I think is kind of a missed opportunity. They could aim at those cones, it's not like I would be able to catch it. But occasionally they do aim at those cones that I am protecting and that is when the problem arises. While I can dodge it, it's not exactly in my best interest to dodge it if I can save the cone. If I save the cone and I get out myself, somebody can just take my spot and then my team can just get me back in later. So that doesn't exactly matter, right? But it does matter when I'm putting myself on the line and literally sacrificing myself in place of the cone, right? I wouldn't say it's a particularly noble act, in fact it's kind of just like, oh, you're really bad at this, you have no athletic ability whatsoever, and you're not really going to be able to play the game, but you do enjoy helping your class out? Oh, okay, you could just protect the cone. Which honestly, it's not like any of my classmates are like condescending about it to me. I just feel like they probably think that, oh, well, she's kind of useless to have on our team. But either way, I do try to help as much as I can. And I do help by protecting the cones. So on this very day, I was also protecting the cone like usual. And then it happened. Now, the boys in our class are actually famous for Piffing the ball so hard that you could probably crack a bone if you got hit by that ball. Um, honestly, not shocking, but they have tremendous arm strength. I would like to congratulate them, but I've been, like, actually screwed over so many times because of that. Like, the amount of times that they have launched a ball that has hit me is, like... I could probably go on counting forever. So, I don't exactly appreciate their abilities in throwing you know, inanimate objects at other people. But anyways, so the boys from the other class were playing offensive. So were the boys from our class, but either way, they were offensive for now because they had most of the balls and I was making sure my cone was protected at all costs. And that's exactly what it took. It took my life to protect the precious cone. I got hit, right? I'm not entirely sure where I got hit, but I was definitely not hit at a place where it hurt or it was even particularly memorable. But as I was walking out, like just going behind all the other people to go out to where all the people who are out are standing, I was hit again. And this time, it was pretty bad. It hit me like square in the face, but it hit me right on my left eye. Now, while dodgeballs aren't, like, particularly hard, when a rubber ball is traveling that fast at that speed, when it suddenly comes to rest, it hurts. And it hurts a lot. For a second, I completely blacked out. Like, honestly, for, like, the next three seconds, I would say, after impact, I actually have no idea what happened. But I do know that, like, like within those three seconds i had like three people near me and they were like hey you okay you good and this entire time like my eye was just shut i could not force it to open and also because it also hit my nose in the process and honestly getting hit on the nose is the actual worst so i was just like there and i was just like 
um, I was about to cry, like it hurt that much, and I'm not usually like a crier, but well, I'm not a crier when it comes to physical pain, anyways. But I was just about to cry, and I was like, oh my goodness, I don't want to like start crying in front of everyone, and then they're like, oh my goodness, she's like, she's so weak, you know, like just a ball to the face, like why is she crying over it? So. I was just like, oh my goodness, don't cry, don't cry, right? And so I turned towards the back wall and considering I was already like close to the wall anyways because, you know, the cones are at the back, I turned towards the back wall and I'm like, oh my goodness. And so that's when I finally have the courage to open my eye and be my friend is like in front of me and I look at her and I'm like opening my eye and as I open my eye, I can tell that it's not opening as well as it should. So I'm like, is it swollen? And she's like, yeah and so you know how when something gets hit or when you get hurt somewhere it does take a while to swell nope this swelling was just instant i literally closed my eyes for three seconds and then my eyes were open again and it is crazy how quickly that happened but anyways i was led out by my friend to the canteen and now our canteen is like right behind our gym and so we got an ice pack from them and so i just like put the ice pack up to my face right and this is when i started to really worry because i actually have been hit near the eye before and what happened that time was that it bruised up really bad i had a black eye for i think an entire week maybe two weeks like it was really bad it looked like i'd been in a really bad fight but all that had happened was that my ipad fell on my face while i was kind of like laying down and using it that was my fault but i was really super scared that something like that was gonna happen again and guess what i was going in holidays in three days this was this happened on a thursday and i was going on holiday saturday morning i was terrified i was like oh my goodness am i gonna spend my entire holiday with a half shut blue eye at first it was actually really terrifying everywhere i looked had these like rainbows well every light source that i looked at had these like rainbows surrounding it and i was terrified it was like blurry my eye was watering it wasn't coming down and so we went to the optometrist Thank goodness the optometrist was like, okay, there's no like structural damage, you'll be fine, just let it like die down. If it hurts too much, come back. And that is the story. Sorry I was like a little bit uh, disoriented, but I kind of have to also get onto this uh, project making bit. But that was how I almost, but not exactly, lost my eye to a game of dodgeball. Alright, so yesterday off camera, I kind of like folded this fabric over and then ironed it out because it was getting really, really difficult to work with. So then I pinned down the zipper and I also like pinned where it's going to close later on. And so I'm just going to stitch this up now and then we'll focus on stitching the back of the skirt up so that it's one cohesive piece and then attaching it to the bodice and also like trying to see if this fits and what other alterations i need to make to it and then we can move on to the sleeves but i'm still like a little bit iffy woffy about exactly how we're gonna do this surely i have to add in the sleeves before i add the skirt onto this i'll think about it Right, so we have a problem. Um, I've just tried on this bodice after making the alterations and it fits perfectly. But the only reason why it fits perfectly is because this fabric, it still has a little bit of stretch to it. But once I attach the skirt onto this and then I sew it together, the fabric won't have that stretch onto it anymore. So now I'm kind of like stuck between what to do. One of the options that I could take is basically just to like take out the sides and re-sew that bit so that it's a little looser fitting and then just so I can get it on and then add some like strings to the back to tighten it up once the dress is on. That is an option. The other option is I just keep the skirt and the bodice separate pieces and that way it would also mean that I can wear them both as separate garments. And that would be preferable in most cases, but I just don't know if I would ever wear this skirt anywhere else because it is quite like a, you know, where am I going to be wearing a velvet skirt to? I have to think about that and I still have some decisions to make, 
I just don't know if it's going to be worth keeping them separate garments, but if that's the only option, I'm going to have to find a way that it works, that it would still look like one dress. Maybe then I could add in like a little like lace belt or something with my extra lace, but I still have to work around the reins of it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the bodice first and I'm going to finish the skirt first. So I'm just going to... Uh, actually, I can't end up doing the back because then I would need to add a zipper if I... Uh... Okay, I'm just going to think of it. I'm going to finish the bodice first. I think that's just going to be easy. And even if then I decide that I want to restitch these sides, that's still possible even with everything else done. So, let's try and get to that. So I just did the basic and cut everything out. Apparently, if you just like geometry it and just like move things around a bit, you can actually fit everything on the piece of fabric that you had with more space left. And so that's what I did. And one of the reasons that I actually had to do that was because I accidentally cut some holes into the velvet. So I needed to shape my pieces around them. Thankfully, I was able to get my pieces out. After that, I just stitched the arms, I stitched the arms up, I stitched the bodice up, and I stitched the skirt hem up. So I've added a zipper to the skirt, and that pretty much definitely means that these are going to be two separate pieces. And I know, I know the zipper is white. I did actually want to make it black because obviously it's a lot harder to see black with red than it is to see white with red like this is really popping out um i'm gonna hope that this is enough to cover it once i'm wearing it i did make it as invisible as i could i don't know if i did that great of a job but i think it's satisfactory and the only reason why i didn't choose a black zipper here is because this is about the length that i needed and my black zipper is way too long and i think that could better be used for another project and i also don't have any like time or anything to go out and buy a black zipper that is about this size to add into this project because well i i kind of have a deadline to finish this by and i'm not going to be able to obtain a perfectly sized black zipper by then so i just took my shots and put in a white zipper instead i don't think it really matters that much i'm just going to try and make it work and besides the zipper is going to be at the back and maybe I can like try to cover it up with some lace. I don't know, I'll have to see about that. Then I stitched up the side of, well, the back of the skirt anyways. Honestly, this project was mostly just like the usual. The bodice isn't that difficult to put together and I've actually put it together quite a few times on this channel. Honestly, the hardest bit about this entire project was actually hemming the bottom of the skirt because oh my goodness, was there so much hemming to do. I've basically finished up both these pieces. I haven't, uh hemmed these edges like the top of the skirt or like the bottom of my bodice yet and i'm not entirely sure if i will because it is a lot of effort to like pin everything and then hem it and because it's velvet it's very easy to just like miss pin something um so i'm still contemplating whether or not i will do that i probably will at the end but at the end of the day it's not a very like fraying type of fabric so i don't have to worry about that Rips and tears, though, are a different thing, so maybe to prevent those, I'll have it, but I'll see. But for now, I've got these things ready, and now I'm going to get out my lace, and I'm going to go on the internet and search up some design inspo. Honestly, watch every time I've watched Lion's music video, I've always felt like it gave off like super duper Narnia vibes. And the only like two people that I've ever talked to that I've been able to talk to about this don't necessarily agree, but I tend to find a lot of like vibes in songs. And I think Lion and Narnia give off the same vibe. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that when they're uh, kind of just like uh, ascending the steps, that looks like very much like Care Paravel. I don't know if- it doesn't necessarily look like 
the movie versions, but it definitely looks like what I thought of as Care Paraval, you know, with the glass ceiling and all. And obviously, they're red dresses, and I think red is like Narnia's colour. That does make sense, because literally the colour of the boy's armour is red, and I suppose Susan also wears a red dress. And not to mention that, you know, lions, uh, a lion is a pretty big imagery in Narnia, probably the most imagery you can get. Uh, there is a literal golden lion on the red tunic bit of the boy's armor, and it just makes so much sense, right? In my head, it's just like, why doesn't anybody else see this connection? They are literally the same vibe. But anyways, that's just me going on a side off tangent. Okay, so I was gonna stitch down this bit when I folded it over, but now I actually think I'm just gonna like add in the button, but this is design option one. It looks pretty cool, but this is design option two, and I think I like this better, so I'm gonna start off with this anyway. So I picked out the thread and I just decided to put in some snap fasteners instead of like stitching down the whole thing and I actually did it kind of wrong. I was originally planning to do one at the top and one at the bottom but I went the lazy route and just did one in the middle and that means that it's a little bit wonky, the final belt, but it's really okay. Then I stitched on like the lace border at the neckline and I messed it up but luckily because I did it in yellow thread I could redo it. And here is the final look. I'm honestly in love with it, but my mom said maybe we'd change the lace because it's like a little wonky and she thinks that maybe something a little fancy it could do. But that's why I haven't cut it and I actually even like this like triangular design at the back. So since I haven't actually cut up the lace yet, I can do whatever I want with it. I can style it this way, I can style it that way. I actually really like this like inverted triangle look. Um, maybe that's what I'll go for because... I have to make some last minute alterations anyways. The skirt bit isn't actually like awful for somebody else that wants to try it, but this is the look. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope that you're having a good day. I hope that you continue to have a good day and I will see you next time.